Well, welcome to the first topic in the third module on coastal hydraulics, and this topic deals with offshore processes. We'll have um, three videos. The first video deals with wave formation and propagation. We'll talk about wave characteristics, the processes of wave formation, and then how they propagate into shallow water from the deep waters. Firstly, the key wave characteristics are the wavelength, so the distance between adjacent peaks, the wave height, the difference in elevation between the peak of the wave and the, the wave trough, or we can talk about the wave amplitude, which is approximately half the wave height. Um, and then um, the other characteristic is the wave period, which is the, the time it takes for the wave to travel a distance of one wavelength. And then there's the wave speed or the celerity, which is um, is the, um, the wavelength divided by the wave period um, is the other key characteristic. We can imagine or simplify waves to have this sort of sinusoidal waveform. In reality, waves do um, diverge from that idealized form where we can have uh, peaks forming. Um, waves can break, they can be irregular, but they almost always are um, irregular in their form, but we often simplify them to a, a sign a sinusoidal wave. Waves form in what's called C. So C is distinct from the, the common word meaning of C. It's, it's, it's diffused where waves are currently forming under the action of wind. Wind causes sh shearing at the ocean, leading to the development of seas. The magnitude of the sea wave depends on the wind intensity, so how strong the wind is, how long it blows for, so the duration, and the distance over which that wind blows or passes. So if you're in an inlet, um, a, a narrow, long inlet, and the wind's blowing across the inlet, um, there's not much distance for the waves to develop, so you won't get um, big waves in that inlet at that time. If the wind blows along the length of the inlet, say along several kilometres, then you can get much bigger waves developing at the downwind end of, of that inlet. And so now we're going to talk about the development of waves. And as we said before, that, that's, that's, that's referred to as C. And then we'll talk about um, free waves, which uh, are described as swell. That's where the waves have been developed. Um, the wind might cease, but the waves continue to propagate across the ocean. So firstly, forced waves, which are waves which are currently being developed by the action of the wind on the water surface. And the first thing that develops as the wind starts to blow is ripples form. Uh, we can recognise this sort of familiar ripple pattern on the water. And, you know, sailors use these, um, these ripples to, to see where uh, wind gusts might be coming on the water. They can see that the ripples quickly form um, as the wind blows across the surface. Uh, and surface tension, at this scale of waves, surface tension is, is important and pulls the water back into um, uh, a smooth surface um, uh, all the time. If the wind continues, um, those ripples create uh, increased friction between the wind uh, and, the, and the water, so increased shear. They speed up the process of development of the wind, the ripples get larger, and eventually you get the formation, formation of gravity waves. So this is waves where surface tension is not the key, key, um, the, the key force, it's, it's, it's the force of, of gravity that pulls the waves back into um, uh, the horizontal um, a flat surface and the wind that stirs them up and creates the gravity wave. If the wind keeps blowing and strong enough, eventually the waves will get high enough and steep enough that they'll break. And so we get um, breaking waves and, the, and, and, the fo and foam appearing on the, uh, on the peak of those waves. If we imagine then that the wind ceases, uh, the waves don't just go away, they're still there. In fact, in deep water, um, there's very low um, resistance, low um, energy losses from waves, and so they can continue to pr propagate um, very, very long distances across the oceans. Um, and so they're called free waves or swell. Um, and they, and, and in deep water, that's what was where the, um, the, the depth of water is greater than at least half the, the wavelength, then uh, the waves will propagate for very long distances indeed. And we tend to see these fairly regular um, wavelengths. They're regular, in fact, when they're formed, 
is, is a high level of irregularity. You don't see these sort of this regular periodicity of the waves, of the swell waves. What happens um, after the wind dies is the waves sort themselves out. Those that are traveling with a higher, um, higher celerity uh, travel ahead of the ones which are traveling with a lower celerity, celerity and eventually you get this sort of regular periodicity in the waves. Um, and um, we have the deep water waves and then they move, they move into shallow water which is defined as areas where the water depth is less than um, 1 20th of the wavelength they start to be transformed in various ways, which we'll talk about um, later on. Wind strength is important in determining a way of development, and the Beaufort scale has been used to develop, to, it's been developed as a way of characterizing wind strength with the numbers going from zero to 12. Um, they can be related to wind speed in kilometers per hour, and some description of the kind of sea state you expect to see um, under those different uh, wind strengths. So now we'll talk about wave propagation, and that's after the winds died or the waves have passed out of that windy area, um, we have some swell. So swell is the combination of waves produced by sea, potentially at multiple sources. And as these waves are superimposed, a group period develops in which waves periodically fluctuate in magnitude. And so we can see here, um, in this pattern here, two sets of waves superimposed and where the waveforms line up and the peaks line up, we get much bigger peaks and troughs. And where they don't, where they cancel each other out, um, we get um, these very low um, amplitude waves. And so anyone who's been um, surfing knows you wait for the big set, which is just here, in, in the middle here. And if you go out to surf here, you get, you get a bit disappointed. You've got to wait a little while before you get the next set coming through. There's a global pattern to the development of waves, um, and they develop where the winds are strongest, which is typically at the polar front. So around you know, 40 degrees latitude um, in both the northern and, and southern hemisphere is where the, the winds tend to be strongest, or um, where there's hurricanes um, uh, and cyclones is also an area where you get um, a, a high development of waves, of strong waves. 